Evening, everybody. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Anybody recognize where that comes from? Right? Charles Dickens, the very first line of A Tale of Two Cities. What a great way to start a novel, isn't it? You know, great writers know just how to draw us in with the very first line. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Here's another first line. This first line got nominated for one of the best first lines of a nonfiction book. Here it is. We are going to die, and that makes us one of the lucky ones. Not a very hopeful line, is it? But boy, it draws you in, doesn't it? I want to know we are all going to die and that makes us the lucky ones. That's the first line of a book entitled Unweaving the Rainbow by the prominent atheist Richard Dawkins. Here's another great, great first line. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ the Son of God. We just heard it. It's how Mark's gospel starts. Now it probably seems like a rather dull opening line for us. There's not much zest, not much zine. But boy, if we were listeners or readers in 70 AD about when this book was written, then this opening line, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, would have made Dawkins and Dickens Seem like, seem like, well, amateurs when it comes to composing first lines. First, associating the term good news with Jesus Christ would have shocked anybody. Good news was a pretty common phrase back then, but typically it was used to describe a military victory won by Caesar's army. When the emperor won a battle or when he put down some rebellion, Caesar would send an evangelist, someone to spread the good news ahead of him and his returning army so the people's mood would be lifted and they could throw a big celebration. So to use the term good news to talk about a victory not won by Caesar, but by Jesus, to imply that true victory doesn't have a thing to do with Caesar, but with Jesus, how shocking and provocative the opening line of Mark's gospel was. And to make it even more shocking, even more provocative, Mark claims that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. See, ever since the time of Caesar Augustus, the title Son of God was reserved for the Roman Emperor. But au contraire, Mark says... It's not Lord Caesar, it's Lord Jesus. Final allegiance is due to Jesus Christ, not to sinner, not to Caesar. That first line would have stunned its original audience. And it was a line that would have drawn them into a great, great story. Here's another great, great first line. This is the first line of a poem. It's from our first reading today. It's written, out, written by a poet named, known as Second Isaiah, and it runs, this poem runs through chapters 40 through 55. It's one of the greatest poems ever written, and here's how it starts. Comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. A little too dull, you think? But if you were a Jew in 540 B.C., this opening line would have drawn you in like a cool, fresh stream of water draws in a person dying of thirst. Why? Because your life was in shambles. You'd have been dragged away from your home in Jerusalem, forced to live in a strange and foreign country. No power, no influence. Everything, everything had gone wrong. The temple in Jerusalem, the place where the Israelite God dwelled, the God you worshipped was destroyed. So you'd have had that stomach-turning thought that the God you trusted was not the one true God. 
a weak God defeated by the stronger gods of Babylon. Or maybe even worse, that God had abandoned you. So now you live without any hope. So you thirst for any sign of hope you can get. And then here comes this great, great respected prophet Isaiah who writes this incredible poem and he starts it with comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. Oh, how you would have been drawn in. Both this first line in Mark's gospel, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and the first line of Isaiah's great, great poem, Comfort, Give Comfort to My People, drew readers in and hopefully draws us in too into the one, the one great story, our story. Because we too, in some ways, brothers and sisters, we live somewhat in exile. We live in a world that's not quite what it should be, in a world where we are sometimes assaulted by fear and by division and acrimony, by injustice, by suffering, by disease, by COVID, by death. And we too, aren't we thirsting, desperately thirsting for a message of hope? And our all good and all loving God sees our plight. And the all powerful God sends us a message. Comfort, comfort to my people. Everything in the end will be okay. I know it looks bad now, but it's not what you think. I'm going to do something totally new. I will come and rescue you, and it will be in a very unexpected way. This rescue will be through a servant king who will reign in a new kingdom. The good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And you are not alone. And Through this new king, one day... One day all creation will sing and shout for joy. And guess what? Guess what? It's already started. It's already started. And brothers and sisters in Christ, isn't that what Advent is? Realizing that we are part of the great story, part of the wonderful poem, and watching watching so carefully as the great story, the great poem starts to play out in our lives. And sometimes big ways, but mostly small ones. Like a phone call from somebody just checking in. Like receiving some kind words during this chaos. Like somebody being patient with us in a very stressful time, like the unwavering, the unwavering dedication of a healthcare worker caring for others, like the frontline workers at Kroger working more and more overtime, like the scientist tirelessly laboring for a vaccine, watching. That's what Advent is about watching for something that has already started. It's about watching and it's about waiting. Waiting for the sure hope, the sure hope for that new creation, for the full manifestation of the kingdom of God. Watching and waiting. Watching and waiting for something that has already started. The good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God.